to do some math. Let's do it. All right, you have papers. You have one paper that looks like this, a machine. This is a function machine paper. I have the function machine itself right here in my house. And we will be doing this the next meeting. I also want to look at this page. All right, on the back of this page is the paper that you're going to use for when I do the function machine the next time. Wait till you see that function machine. You're going to like it. All right, you also have a paper, a home note, that looks like this. All right, it, about coins, exploring the coins. We've done a lot of that. And also on the back is about making a collection and tallying how many things in that collection. Right. Today I'm going to be doing this paper with bundles. We start with one in the ones place, then when you get to 10, you put it in the tens place, and then when you get to 100, you put it in the 100s place. You can use a pencil, a marker, you can use your wipe off board, whatever you want with that. All right. I'm I have given you a paper called Paper Money Exchange Game Directions. Well, here's the directions. You'll need to fix your dice like we did in the last lesson with putting paper and different amounts of money on that. Also, there's another place value for the $1 bill, the $10 bill, and the $100 bill that you have. All right, that is a money exchanging game with paper money that you can do. You also have a totally subtraction page. No addition on this page. All subtraction. You've done this one before. It's a number story where you have to illustrate it, write the number sentence, and then write the total amount. And this story is about sea animals, dolphins and fish. Sea animals. Shopping with for toys is the next paper. You have to decide how much this little airplane will equal. Though there's pennies, there's nickels, there's dimes on this paper. So you have to remember what to count by ones, fives, or tens. This little airplane has a price tag of 25 cents. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Should I circle all those nickels or just most of them? All right, a few lessons ago, we talked about the ordinal numbers. This is a review sheet for that, and it is a springtime insect review sheet. It has first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, sixth places on there. The ordinal numbers of first through sixth. Color your little insects, and then you have to read the story of where to place your insects or glue them. You have to cut them and glue them up here. They are out of order. They are not in the right sequential order. You have to do that one. All right. There is another paper called Number of the Day. You've had one of these every week. You know what to do. All right. The last page I have is an addition page, but it is different than the other ones. This is for the number family of 10 and we will be doing the number family of 10 on our next meeting. But this one, when you have a missing part of a number sentence and it's addition, if you're adding two numbers, each one of these numbers is called an add end and then you get the sum. Well, you're missing an add end. Well, how can I figure out if two plus what equals 10? I could count on two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Oh, two plus, eight equals 10, or I could do the opposite operation. I could take 10 and subtract two, and that would equal eight also. Cut and glue. All right, that is the last page that we need to go through. I do, you will need a whiteboard. If you wanna do tally sticks, you can do it, but you can do that on your whiteboard also. We will be using my place value pocket chart, and um, here are our um, vocabulary words. Unifix cubes, do you remember those fun, colorful, little interconnecting cubes that you could push together? 
and, and uh, use as a resource? Well, I've drawn some pretend unifix cubes up here. That's where we're, we're going to use for the number family of nine this time. We're not using bears or beads on a necklace. We are using a different resource called unifix cubes. All right, ones, tens, hundreds. Ones, tens, hundreds. All right, place value. Exchanging things or trading things for an equal amount. Those two terms are um, the same terms that mean the same thing. All right, reverse digits. We are going to be talking about that today. And we're going to talk about collections. All right, here we go. Good job, friends. All right, what we're going to do first is we are going to do the number family of nine. Now let me turn off my lamp because I think it's making it hard for you to see my board. All right, now let's see if I can move this over so you can see it a little better. All right, there it is. Number family of nine, and I wrote the number word, using unifix cubes. All right, remember I used blue and red bears before and blue and red beads. So I am going to use blue and red markers to show, to color in my pretend unifix cubes. These are a representation of unifix cubes. All right, I'm gonna start with zero blue cubes and nine red cubes, that equals nine. There is my number sentence. Zero plus nine equals nine. Okay, here we go. Zero blue, and then all the rest are red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go, nine. All right, the next one I'm going to use one blue cube. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it is true that one blue plus eight red do equal nine. So I'm going to write one blue, eight red, that equals nine. All right, good job on this. Okay, so we know from the last one, the last time we did a number family, you need to add one more on the first side and then take away one more on this side. So there won't be so many red ones. There will be seven red ones, I bet, and two blue ones. Two blue, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that equals nine, so two blue and seven red equal nine. All right, let's see what three blue and six red equal. Three blue, one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, four, six, eight, nine. That equals nine. Three blue, six red equals nine. All right, here we come down to the bottom of this row, and I'm going to do four blue and five red. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Four blue, five red equals nine. Good job, everyone, for knowing that. This number family thing is a fun game to play. Now I'm going to move this over so you can see this side of the chart now. All right, let's see now. All right, we ended with 4 plus 5. Now I need to do 5 red this time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Nope, not five red. I'm sorry, not five red. That was wrong. Sorry, friends. I'm going to erase that right now. And I am going to do five blue. Five blue and four red. One, two, three, four. So, oh, that's going to be the partner number equation for the last one. So, 4 plus 5 and 5 plus 4, the add-ins have switched places there. All right, now we're going to go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 blue and 3 red. Well, we know from 3 plus 6 equals 9 that this is going to equal 9 because you can move the add-ins 
and still end up with the same answer. All right, now I'm going to go to seven blue, four, five, six, seven, and two red, and that is seven plus two equals nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I just checked my answer, that was right. All right, now I'm going to go to eight blue, eight and one red eight blue plus one red that equals nine again all right and the last one all blue nine blue two four six eight and one more makes nine so nine plus zero red equals nine there you go you can do that at home that was really fun. I represented the number family of nine a little differently this time, and that was a lot of fun. All right, now I'm gonna do another representation of nine, the number family of nine, but I'm gonna do a collection right now. We've done that at school before, but let me hang this board right here over my Unifix cube chart. Let me find my stapler. Where are you, stapler? There it is. All right, that handy dandy stapler. I've had this stapler for a long time and I love it. It works really well. All right, I want to make a representation chart for number nine. Here we go. I'm making a collection of nine things for no, things that equal nine. All right, let's look at this right now. Collection of nines. Well, if I have a dice, two dice, and I draw, draw dots on those dice to equal nine, let's see, I could put five. I could do all those different number sentences, but I'm gonna put five on one. Let's see, I put five on one, so I could go ahead and put four on the other one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is correct. All right, let me do nine tallies. Tally with me, please. One down, two down, three down, four down. Tally up five across to the finger space. Six down, seven down, eight down, nine down. All right. Now, do you remember some number sentences that equal nine? I'm going to do some addition ones. Well, we just did some right over here. I'm going to do seven plus two equals nine. I'm going to make sure that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, and I'm going to illustrate it with dots above it. Let me do another one right here. My papers are kind of falling apart here. Let's see, how about if I do nine plus zero equals nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine dots plus zero dots equal nine. The coins that I need. Well, I know what I'm going to need. I'm going to need one that equals five cents and four that equal one cent. So I'm going to do four pennies, one cent, one cent, one cent, one cent. Five plus six, seven, eight, nine equals nine cents. Or I could write nine cents. All right, I wrote the words out there. Let's see. Let's do a subtraction. Let's see if I started with ten because I say I want one less than 10. 10 take away one equals nine. All right, so if I have 10 dots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and I cross out one, how many do I have left? Of course. All right, my Unifix cubes, I'm gonna pick which one I want. I want three, four, five, five, six, seven red, and two blue this time. Seven red and two blue. All right, you can do that with all the numbers. We did that quite a bit at school. Remember, I had those posters in my daily three math drawer for you to use to do this with. All right, next, we're going to move on to the next part. All right, here we go. 
the next thing that I want to do is this. I want you to read my mind. Can you read my mind, please? Read my mind numbers. I'm thinking of a number. It has two in the tens place and three in the ones place. What number am I thinking of? Two in the tens and three in the ones. Oh, there it is, 23. So I'm gonna write that on that line. 23 was the number I was thinking of. What number is the reverse of that number? Well, if I put the three in the tens and the two in the ones, oh, there it is. 32 is the reverse of 23. All right, so it would be 32. I'm writing in my answer. What number comes before 32? 32, 31. Oh, 31 does. 31. What if I add 2 to 31? Let me put 32 here. 31, 1, 2, that would equal 33. You can play a lot of games like that on your number grid or your number line. Try to trick your family members with those kind of questions. Read my mind. Good job reading Mrs. Trimble's mind today. All right, right now we are going to look at our place value. Let's see, I need to move this back again. Move this back. I want you to be able to see my little place value chart here. Now I'm going to move that up so that you can see it better. So I'm going to pull it off my wall. I'm going to move it right up here. And I need my stapler again. Handy dandy stapler. Couldn't deal without it right now. I'm using it all the time. All right, we're going to talk about ones place, tens place, hundreds place. All right. I've always liked doing place value counting the days of the month, counting the days of school, ca just counting all the time. All right, so my first thing I'm gonna do is roll my dice. All right, I rolled a three, so I'm going to start putting straws in because I don't have enough of the orange sticks at my house right now. I'm going to put three straws in the ones position. I hope you can see them. Wow, that's gonna be hard, hard to see. All right, so I have three straws now. I'm going to roll again. Oh, I rolled a six. One, two, three, four, five, six straws. Now I have six straws, and I'm going to add those to the three straws. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine straws. Only nine straws right now. I can't bundle those and put them in the tens position. All right, let me roll again. Whoop, I rolled a three. One, two, three. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to put that in a rubber band so that I can move that to the tens position. All right, now I have one bundle of 10 and two lonely sticks. 10, 11, 12. That is, equals the number 12. Now you can keep doing that until you get enough bundles to in the tens position, all right, when you get enough bundles in the tens position, what can you do with them? Well, let's see. I'm going to see if I have enough. I'm going to see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have a big, big bundle of 10, ta 10 bundles. So let's see if I have enough to equal 100. 10, 20, 30, 
40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So I would move those all the way over to the 100th position. All right, keep working on your ones, tens, and hundreds position. Keep making representations of numbers using collections of things. You can use real collections of things. And keep doing your number families and try to see if you can stump anybody, trip them on all of your number sense and all of your questions about numbers. Thanks for joining me today. See you soon. Bye-bye.